Sounds nice. It healed and smells good. So my truck had a leakage issue right here. But now, can you see that? Right here. And now it's all fixed. Like, ah. Oh. That sounds good and smells good. So this is telling me to start today's video. So this is the exact strength of this camera, FX30. Although it's very compact and light, it gets so many great video functions and image quality with image stabilization and unbelievable autofocus performance. You can get those by $1,800. It has both of high mobility and performance, which allows us to use this camera as a casual vlogging setup like right now, and the cinema camera. Welcome to today's crux. What is the cinema camera? What is the exact definition of that? Where is the line between this camera and this mirrorless camera? $1,800 and compact light body relatively in that genre, it's impossible to ignore the existence of this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera series. Recently, I sometimes get a question and request like a FX30 versus Blackmagic 4K or 6K. They both are compact cinema camera and their price are pretty close, so probably that's why some people, you know, had a question like that. So today, I will do the comparison of FX30 and Blackmagic 6K. But this is not gonna be the detailed review of Blackmagic 6K. I'm just gonna use this camera to talk about what is a cinema camera and the position of FX30 and its cinema camera ability performance. So as always, before getting into this video, please hit the subscribe if you haven't to grow this channel. I need your support. Obviously, huge difference like this. Well, I'm gonna talk about build quality function stuffs more later, but first, let me introduce their overall spec, especially Blackmagic 6K, for those who don't know much about this camera. So, FX30 and Blackmagic 6K, they both have APS-C sensor, a super 35mm sensor. As we all know, FX30 is Sony E-mount, but Pocket 6K is Canon EF mount. They can shoot photo, but this Pocket 6K doesn't shoot RAW, just only DMG file. But when it comes to video, this shows its true color. It can shoot up to 6K 50fps RAW by internal recording. While FX30 can do up to 4K 120fps 4 to 10 bit, well, there are more features about this camera, but the major strength of this is a 6K 12-bit RAW 50fps with smaller data size than other cameras raw. So the major strength of FX30 is the more than average video performance and the compact body and the high mobility. So that all-rounder personality of FX30 and 6K 12-bit raw of Blackmagic 6K is gonna be the biggest battle today. So now let's see their image quality. Can you tell the 6K rules the world when I nailed the focus? Now this footage is coming from Pocket 6K 6K video. How is it? When you compare it with FX30's 4K, now this is FX30, is there any big difference 6K and 4K? So, 6K is not always so important to entertain people. Most of them don't care about if it's 4K or 6K as long as the image is clean and sharp enough. I don't think there is a crucial difference when they're normal size, but as the one who makes, 6K allows me to commit to the detail. It has the resolution advantage which gives you the denser image. This is a very weird way to explain, but uh, not only actual resolution is high, but also the resolution of the story that you want to tell is high. When I see 6K footage with a big screen, I still get overwhelmed by this vast and strong power. Also, 6K gives you the crop option when you edit. I crop it a lot, especially in a product shooting, and 6K in product shooting is so good. So FX30's 4K is pretty enough for most of scenarios. I don't have any complaints about uh, FX30's 4K. I shoot on this, you know, like more than like 65% of my videos. But the thing is, most of cinema cameras can shoot more than 4K. You know, you're gonna export the video in 4K or 1080p eventually, but you want like a 6K or 8K for some documentaries or some short films. So considering that, I think FX30 is a little weak as the cinema camera. 
This video is brought to you by Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is a royalty-free music platform. You can get unlimited access to a whole bunch of music and sound effects. Also, did you know the Epidemic Sound had the app? You can do pretty much the same thing as the website. Just browsing music and creating playlists and saving your favorite sounds and musics. What I like about this is I can browse music and sound effects when I have some time with smartphone and save them in a playlist. Later, when I actually edit on my computer, I can download them to use in a video. That can reduce a huge amount of time and effort to find music and sound effects for each video. So if you're already using Epidemic Sound, please try this app. It's so efficient and good. And if you haven't tried Epidemic Sound before, the link is in the below. There is a 30-day free trial you can cancel anytime. So just try it. But 6K video is not a biggest difference between them. The color is the one. Always this Black Magic RAW produces the highest, most amazing, most fancy fanciest most fancy color result so black magic cameras can shoot b raw b raw which is relatively smaller size than other uh, cameras raw data but it has 12 bit raw so 12 bit raw versus 10 bit s log 3 to me comparing them is making no sense by the way simply raw is pretty much same as photo raw the sensor captures all information so you can have full control in post like you can change iso and white balance later in davinci resolve and of course you can have the maximum color potential and the flexibility i guess this color topic could be one of the things to decide the line between the cinema camera and normal mirrorless camera i particularly love black magic raw color B-roll is relatively warm and soft. It has a certain uniqueness. The overall feel is not too crispy. The way the contrast and colors show up is a little mild and gentle. It really fits my style, my color preference. If you use Sigma lens on that, the sharpness level gets just right. Especially I love the blue of the sky from Blackmagic Raw. I started to use Blackmagic camera since this video. Don't you think this blue sky is getting something iconic in my channel? Those were shot on Blackmagic 4K or 6K. That's what I'm talking about. FX30 can shoot 4 to 10 bit S log 3. It gives you the huge color data and you have more things to do compared to 8 bit footage. In most of cases, 4 to 10 bit is more than we need. And I don't necessarily need a Blackmagic RAW to make videos. It has a great color potential and it gives you the control that can let you have the result you want. But still, it's not better than B-Raw. If I show you both footages side by side, well, it's not a perfect comparison. But still, those were shot in the same day and same light condition. You can see how deep and rich the Blackmagic RAW is. And again, if I call it a cinema camera, I want it to have a raw internal recording. So this is also making me less confident to say FX30 is a cinema camera. About dynamic range, FX30 has 14 plus stop and Pocket 6K is 13 stop. So the number tells the FX30 has better dynamic range than Blackmagic 6K. Echoing. Hey. Actually, I think Pocket 6K is better than FX30. Both are really good, but Pocket 6K has more detail in shadow and highlight. Pocket 6K RAW has wider shadow highlight flexibility. But the difference is not so huge. I mean, Pocket 6K is RAW, so it should be better. But just think about that. This small compact body can produce this wide dynamic range. How good it is. Also, FX30 has better low light performance than Pocket 6K. I gotta say, this 6K is not good at natural low light situation. What I mean by natural is street and landscape, not studio. 6K has dual base ISO, 400 and 3200. But about this, FX30 wins completely. It also has dual base ISO, 800 and 2500, and Cine EI, which gives you the highest log performance. This is APS-C camera, but the low light performance is more than that. That is one of the things I don't like about this camera, that weak low light performance. About this, FX study is so much better. Although I don't know if, you know, the strong low light performance is necessary, you know, for the cinema camera or not. Okay, here, let's talk about the build quality difference. This will be the crucial 
topic that decide if you go for this Black Magic 6K or FX30. You know, when you just look at them, you might think like, okay, Pocket 6K is bigger and heavier than FX30, but I can take it for 6K 12-bit RAW. If you buy this camera based on that, that is a huge mistake. So we know about FX30 build quality really well, right? So I'm not talking about that this time. From now, I'm gonna say only bad things about this camera. First, you can't shoot as is. Well, that's a little exaggerated. But first, the monitor is fixed. It can't tilt or flip, just it's fixed. Although the monitor is big and clean, so it's very easy to see what you're shooting at that moment as long as it's in front of your eyes like this. So it's really hard to see the monitor like this low angle or high angle. So that's why I use this type of external monitor for this camera. Second, the battery life is ridiculously short. So this uses the uh, Canon LPE6 battery. That lasts about like 30 minutes in 6K recording. 30 minutes. So you gotta carry a bunch of batteries in a pocket. Otherwise, you're gonna have to use some kind of external battery, which I'm gonna talk about later. Third, it has two card slots. One is for SD card and another one is for CFast, huge, you know, card. But the problem is the data size is massive. In my shooting environment, it eats at least 500 gigabytes in, you know, just one project. So using memory cards cost a ton and it's slow. So I think most of Blackmagic users are using this SSD as the external recording device. See? External, external, and external. That's why you need a case to have a happy filmmaking life with this camera without a stress. So actually, this is not a true figure of this camera. This is the real Pocket 6K. But FX30 can go just like this. So no need to compare, FX30 has a lot better usability. But also if I have to answer the question like which is uh, more cinema camera-ish, I would say this 6K. Because cinema cameras ignore the usability and the mobility. There will be many people to operate the camera. So with that being said, I think Blackmagic is more like cinema camera. But FX30 is just good regardless of the type of cameras. So this is also a huge difference between those two cameras. First, the Blackmagic doesn't have the autofocus. Well, it's too exaggerated, but it doesn't have continuous autofocus. It only has the single autofocus. When you push this button, it can focus on the subject, but it's not gonna track it. It doesn't have a continuous autofocus like FX30 has. Plus, that single autofocus isn't that accurate. So, I guess this is the biggest flaw of this camera. But most of the cinema cameras don't have a good autofocus because, you know, we're supposed to use manual focus. So, I say that is pretty normal. What I do is using this type of wireless uh, focus control called Photo Focus or the app to control Blackmagic wirelessly. Sure, it's not so convenient, but yeah, I can handle it somehow. At least I can make videos with this alone, but if you're not ready for this madness, you will hurt so bad. And about video function, FX30 can do pretty much things that Blackmagic can do, like showing the lot and those lines and markers, which you potentially use in a serious professional shooting situation. Also, Cine EI is a great shooting option for that too. But FX30 has less recording options compared to Blackmagic 6K. It only shoots in 4K or 1080p. Blackmagic has several 6K sizes and 5K, 4K, anamorphic, and 2.8K. Also, you can choose bitrate like this, depending on the project. But normal 4K and 1080p is not available in 6K, and also 6K is not available in ProRes. So you're gonna be using almost only raw. It has some options, but it's gonna be the data consuming anyway. But this is a very cinema camera in a good and a bad way. Okay, that's it. I hope this helps someone someday, somehow. So my conclusion about the cinema camera, like what is cinema camera? 
uh, is this FX30 a cinema camera? Are cinema cameras always better than normal, uh, normal mirrorless cameras? How many times do I have to say cameras in this video? Cameras, cameras, cameras. So first, what is a cinema camera? That depends on people, but to me, raw and more than 4K. With that being said, I can't say FX30 is a cinema camera, in my opinion. And this is not for people who want a cinema camera. But hey, don't hate this and me saying this. Just hear me out, guys. First of all, I don't think cinema cameras are always better than this type of mirrorless camera. When we talk about the camera in general, I think this FX30 has a, a really high average video performance. In total, FX30 is a better camera than this Blackmagic 6K. What is a cinema camera and what is a good camera depends on your purpose and perspective. To me, still FX30 is better, but it's not a cinema camera. I think this is a mirrorless camera that can make shooting videos easier, aka video specialized camera. So the reason why I still use this camera is RAW and 6K. That's it. Plus, it's not so convenient. You gotta take care of everything manually by yourself. But that gives me, you know, the feel like, oh, I'm making. So that's why I like this camera. But usually about 65 to 70% I use Sony Alpha series or this FX30 because they are so convenient and powerful enough. You can't go wrong with them. That's what I genuinely thought about this topic. The cinema camera is outdated. Today, things are getting democratized. Before, some amount of, you know, some small amount of people with a power had a right to broadcast. But 4G was born, 5G was born, the right to make whatever we want and to broadcast them spread it out. It came down to us. This is the symbol of that. Everyone should be able to shoot videos and photos easily. Smartphones are a great tool for that. And even this, this type of mirrorless camera symbolizes the democratization. Democratization, so hard to say. Democratization, democratization. So basically going for this type of camera is a wise choice now. Especially if you want to start now, please go for this. But that doesn't mean I never recommend this camera. You know, it's not a usual choice to choose, but I'm still using this. Because, like I said, everything is getting democratized. So people who make increases more and more, and that causes the mannerism. You know, so in that Using this this type of weird, uh, unique, different tool gives you the originality, but not only the outward production, also the mindset and philosophy. So the popularity, uniqueness, that's my slogan to survive this year. So, that's it for today. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. If you like this video, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.